Hello everybody, today I have this 2013 Freiner Cascadia with a DD15 engine. Uh, this specific truck is having um, hard to turn issues. What I mean is like if you're trying to turn the engine manually with a tool, the engine doesn't turn or it is really hard to turn. Um, so another problem that I noticed that this engine doesn't have oil pressure. So for some reason oil pressure ha is to zero. There is a issue somewhere in the barren area of the engine. Um, luckily the, the engine starts and runs with no problems, but it is in high risk to seize. So today I'm going to find out what it is the, co uh, the problem that this specific engine has with the low pressure issue. Before starting this video, I'm going to mention that this video was possible thanks to Nationwide Transport Inc. They are no longer located in Fontana, California, they're located in Ontario, California. Um, if you are looking for a job, if you are owner operator, if you are a company driver, or if you are a dispatcher, they're ready to take your applications. They are always looking for people to work with them, as I said before, uh, drivers, uh, owner operators, um, dispatchers. Everybody that is involved in trucking business as well, they are ready to take your business if you are a hauler, if you have um, lots to haul, if you are a broker, they are ready to help you on that too. You can contact directly Kong Lee, which is the VP of this company. He is a friend of mine. He's a very nice person. I'm going to leave his number and his email so you can contact him directly. Uh, but also I'm going to leave the office number and the address so you can go or you can call them if you have any questions about the company and the benefits in other situations that matters to everybody when they're looking for a job. Anyway, back to the truck. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is to uh, get uh, the truck ready to remove the oil pan. I did a video in the past how to remove the oil pump orange, which requires to remove the oil pan underneath the truck. Um, if you wanna know how to do that, you can check the video description below or this corner of the video where I have the video, the link video for that, so you can know how to do it. Because today I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration how to do it, but if you want more details, you can check that video. So the first thing I wanna do is remove the bumper. After removing the bumper, I'm going to drain the oil. After draining the oil, I'm going to remove the oil pan by removing all the bolts and secure the oil pan all around. Also, you have to remove that bridge that goes around under the pan. The oil pan is down as you can see, so the next step is to jack the front area of the vehicle so I can remove the oil pan from underneath the engine. All we have to do is to lift it high enough until we can clear this little bridge and then we can pull the oil pan out like this. So knowing that we have a low oil pressure issue, from this point I'm gonna start researching what is going on with this engine. So the first thing is to research in a look at the oil pan to see if there's any evidence of something broken plastic pieces or pieces of metal. In this case, I can clearly see that this oil pan is clean. The oil smells like new. The oil, uh, the oil pan gasket is recently replaced, so that means that someone did some kind of job before this happened to this. So after looking at the pan, I noticed that there is nothing wrong. There is nothing but new oil it smells like new so I'm gonna inspect this area now the uh, suction manifold the tubes and the oil pump to see if there is any broken pieces or something that is not tied properly or out of the way underneath the engine so now I'm going to check all the components um, I noticed then they replace the oil pickup uh, tubes orange These two orange are new and this one is new the manifold the old suction manifold is new 
because the original is not like that and this truck has like 700,000 miles so someone did a job on their I mean uh, on this area of the engine uh, could be that the reason why something went bad anyway uh, after looking for a while nothing looks bad everything looks in place all the bolts are tight and secure nothing is loose the pickup oils uh, orange are in our own place uh, so that means there is something further than this so physically everything looks all right so now I'm going to inspect because this one is a plastic old manifold suction manifold you have to check the uh, junctions like this one to see if anything loose this one is okay uh, this one is okay is where the oil gets to the um, to the oil pump and there is this one I want to check it out oh this one moves see this one is broken so let me see aha uh -huh. so this is the reason why the oil pressure dropped see this piece came out completely from there so this is where the oil pressure goes to the engine, to the top filters, and then come back to the bearings. Um, so now this is the reason why the oil pressure dropped to zero. There is zero oil pressure because no matter how, no matter how much oil the oil pump pumps to the engine, because this one is completely open, there will not be any pressure on top of the engine. So now I found the reason why this engine had zero oil pressure. Um, I don't know. It looks like it is a part defect, like this thing went bad. But I don't know if the mechanic forced it or something. Maybe the mechanic hit it when he was trying to put the oil pan. He hit it with something because this one goes like this. Maybe hit it on the side over here, and it broke. I don't know. Anyway, we know the reason why this engine is having zero oil pressure now. So it is always very important to research before replacing any part. Check around what you see. As you can see, I found that it looked like everything was okay, but in reality it was not. So I always inspect physically, visually, and if there is only other way to inspect, do it to prevent problems because you can think that this part is good because it looks new but in reality is not good so what I'm going to do is remove all these parts and replace them with new ones but we having hard to turn engine so that means that the all the all the uh, rod bearings and the main bearings gotta be replaced first I'm going to inspect them to see how they are and I'm going to replace them if we are still okay to replace them. If not, we have to remove the entire engine to repair the crankshaft. So I'm going to do a different video on how to replace the main bearings on a DD15 engine, which is going to be very similar for DD13s and DD16s. So if you want to know how to do that, it's going to be a link on the um, description below of this video or in this corner over here as soon as I upload it it's gonna be right here so um, I just gonna do this for the moment and uh, if you wanna see the main bearing replacement just watch the other video and also if you wanna know how to replace these tubes over here this uh, pick up um, the oil suction module and the tubes you can check my other video in the description below where I replaced this because there was a low oil pressure situation. I also am going to be replacing the oil pump. It's so easy to replace it. So this is the part that is broken, the reason why the oil pressure is zero. Uh, anyway, this is a real catastrophic issue Then could damage the engine in a massive way. So um, everything is removed. Under here, everything looks fine as you can see. And looking at the cylinder liners, there is no scratches, which is good. That means that the engine 
didn't suffer a massive damage. Um, everything else looks on place. There is no overheated um, rods. Um, everything looks on place. And the main caps, they don't look overheated too, they look normal. So there is one thing you have to do before uh, doing anything to an engine like this because this engine is in a massive um, way to present a failure, a crunch of failure. So as you can see this little mark over here I think that's a, a bearing wear. That's right, it's kind of gray. So uh, that means then this cap could present a, ma a, ma a major damage than the other ones because the other ones are clean. <laughs> anyway, um, one main important thing to do is to rotate the engine with the screwdriver. I'm going to make sure that the engine rotates. I'm going to place the screwdriver here. And I'm going to try to rotate the engine, and which it does, as you can see. It does rotate, so that means then the engine is still running fine. Yeah, so it is a little hard to turn, but it still rotates. So um, that means that this engine can be safe. So as I said before, I'm going to replace the main bearings. Check my other video for uh, the details about replacing the main bearings on a DD15 engine.